Hello viewers, welcome to today's class on biochemistry. So what is biochemistry? Is it biology or is it chemistry? Well, it is somewhere in between. Our body is composed of trillions of cells and each cell consists of millions of biomolecules. So do we need to study that? Yes, because the interaction of these biomolecules is what makes the body function in a proper manner. Our nutrition, health, medicine all depend upon proper understanding of these biomolecules. So let's get started with biomolecules. Now in today's class we would be studying the way to analyze chemical composition, the various metabolites and one of the important biomolecules that are carbohydrates. Now, for analyzing the composition, what we have to do is take living tissue that could be a piece of liver or a leaf from a plant and then we have to grind it in trichloroacetic acid and that can be done in a mortar and pestle. We will get a thick paste called slurry and then we strain it through the cheesecloth. So what would happen? We will get two fractions, one which will get filtered and the other which will remain as residue. Now these two fractions they are termed filtrate or the acid soluble pool and retentate or the acid insoluble pool. Now what all various molecules will be there? So in the filtrate we will have the micromolecules and in the retentate we will have the macromolecules. Now when we say micromolecules, so that means they are very small, their molecular weight is very less while macromolecules are actually polymers because number of micromolecules combine together to form a large molecule and that is called macromolecule. So if we see their weight range, we will find that these micromolecules, they are 18 to 800 Daltons in weight and Daltons is a unit equivalent to atomic mass unit while macromolecules would be 10,000 Daltons or above. So what all molecules we are going to get here? One category of molecules are the carbohydrates. Now out of the carbohydrates, the simpler sugars, the monosaccharides and the oligosaccharides that we will get in this filtrate while the polysaccharides, the poly word itself means many and saccharides means sugar. So several sugar molecules combine together to form a macromolecule like cellulose, glycogen. So those will be there in this acid insoluble pool. Similarly, another biomolecule that is proteins and amino acids. Now proteins are polymers of amino acids. So amino acids we will get in this acid soluble pool while proteins will be there in the insoluble pool because as these compounds become larger they are insoluble. Next category nucleic acids that is DNA and RNA while these DNA and RNA are made up of individual units called nucleotides. So nucleotides are micro while DNA RNA are macro and last but not the least the lipids. Now for lipids we don't have any category here. So the reason for that is that lipids although they come under the retentate pool but they are not strictly macromolecule. They have been received here just because of their insoluble nature and these lipids they never form polymers. Even if we see their molecular weight we will find that it is within 800 Daltons. So this is an exception. So although lipids we are getting in the retentate pool but it is not a macromolecule. This is an exception. Now these macromolecules or micromolecules they are made up of various elements and in the earth crust also there are various elements. So if we see this composition we will find that out of the so many different elements that you study in the periodic table there are some of them actually which are mainly constituting the human body and this is by percent weight including water. Now out of these the big four, the four elements 
which are making up the major part of the cellular pool those are hydrogen carbon oxygen and nitrogen out of which the maximum amount is of oxygen that is 65% and second to oxygen is carbon 18.5% now for hydrogen our ncrt mentions 0.5% but that is a typing error actual percent is 9.5 because we know that any living cell has nearly 70% water so the amount of hydrogen is high and the fourth is nitrogen the rest of the elements we can see that they are lesser than the other four so the majority of the cellular pool is made up of this big four and out of this big four also the central element is carbon because carbon has very important property that it can bond with four elements simultaneously now carbon can form chemical bonds with four elements then not only that carbon can also make a bond with another carbon and then of course it is also bonded with hydrogen so that this compound is called hydrocarbon and because of this property carbon can form very long chains and carbon when it is bonding with another carbon it is not necessarily just by single bond carbon can also bond with another carbon by a double bond it can bond with another carbon by a triple bond so this speciality of the carbon is important to make such millions of molecules which are the hydrocarbons and we have an entire branch of chemistry devoted to it that is the organic chemistry and these biomolecules are also hydrocarbons now before we move any further let us apply this information in questions now which of the following is present in acid insoluble fraction now here glucose is simple sugar fructose again a simple sugar alanine is amino acid and lipid we had seen is an exception which will be there in the acid insoluble fraction although it is not a macromolecule so our answer is 4 now taking up another question here which of the following is the most abundant element present in the human body so out of the big four we mentioned carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen out of these the most abundant 65.5% it is oxygen so our answer is 3 now let's move on to the next part of the chapter that would be about metabolites and then the carbohydrates moving on to metabolites now what are metabolites a metabolite could be a product of metabolism now metabolism is some total of all chemical reactions taking in place in the body that is anabolism and catabolism so like sugars are formed during photosynthesis so that would be a metabolite and it could be a substrate essential for metabolism like glucose will be utilized by the cells to generate atp so their glucose is also a metabolite now these entire metabolites can be categorized as primary and secondary now primary metabolites are directly involved in the normal growth development and reproduction of the organism like again glucose glucose is a primary metabolite our cells will be deprived of energy if there is no glucose while secondary metabolite is organic compound that is not directly involved in the growth development and reproduction now they could be defense chemicals like the bacteria they synthesize number of antibiotics those are their defense chemicals against other organisms and that would be a secondary metabolite similarly the plants manufacture number of secondary metabolites which are stored within them and we have found certain industrial uses of those secondary metabolites so here we have a list of some of them like pigments 
carotenoids, anthocyanins. Now, carotenoids are orangish yellow, while anthocyanins are reddish as we see in beetroot. Alkaloids, these are bitter in taste, morphine extracted from poppy plant and it is used as an analgesic in post-operative cases. Terpenoids, these are lipid-like substances like turpentine oil and these are containing chemicals called terpenes and those could be monoterpenes or diterpenes. Essential oil, these are fragrant, that means they have a nice smell to them and lemongrass oil also called citronella and it is used as a mosquito repellent. Toxins, abrin, ricin, both of them chemically are proteins, abrin from a plant abrus and ricin from ricinus that is castor and ricin is highly toxic rather one of the most toxic substance known to humankind. Lectins, example here is corn cannabinoid A extracted from a bean corn cannabinoid. Drugs, vinblastin, this is from Vinca rosea or which has been renamed as Catharanthus roseus, a very common plant which we know as Sadabahar. And this vinblastin is an anti-cancer drug or rather it is given to cure cancer. Curcumin is from turmeric. Polymeric substances, now polymer would be a compound which is formed by number of units which are called monomers. So several monomers join to form polymers. So some of these polymeric substances, we have rubber, gums, cellulose. Now, the various biomolecules, those are present in the cellular pool. If we take their average composition, what do we find that the majority of the substance in the cell is water, which is constituting 70 to 90 percent. Then the proteins 10 to 15 percent, nucleic acids 5 to 7 percent, carbohydrates and lipids 3% and 2% respectively. The ions that is the inorganic ions like sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, so on, they are about 1% which is not shown in this pie chart. Now before moving on to these four biomolecules that is carbohydrates, proteins, lipids and nucleic acids, let us solve a few questions. Here we have a question, which of the following secondary metabolite is a polymeric substance? Now just now we have seen that rubber, gums, cellulose, that was in the category of secondary metabolite and that is polymeric substance. So our answer here is option number four. Now another one, which of the following is a secondary metabolite as well as a drug? Now here, all the four substances given to us are secondary metabolites, but out of this, the one which is a drug is vinblastine. So our answer is option two. Now let's move on to the next biomolecule, and that would be carbohydrates.